So the season came to an end. All of the talk of the Glazers getting this done in like the first quarter of 2023 went right out the window. And even getting it done before the end of the season looked like it wasn't going to happen. We've just had some news within the last minutes, really, that Sheikh Jassim and his team and the 92 Foundation have submitted a fifth and final bid. And they have given the Glazers a deadline. And on one hand, this is really, really encouraging to see. On the other hand, it's you know it's it's poker face time, isn't it? Because if they don't accept, then you're left with the prospect of either the Glazers continue as they are right now, or it's going to be a Jim Radcliffe Glazer hybrid. And as much as I don't want to be owned by a state, I also don't think the, the Jim Radcliffe bid um, has the legs to be successful. Um, and the evidence of what he has done at Nice doesn't also fill me with any sort of hope whatsoever. I'll read through the reports and then I'll give you what I'm thinking on it. So, Sheikh Jassim submitted a fifth bid for United. It comes with a Friday deadline and the offer still stands but will no longer have engagement in any negotiations. So, he's gone, look, let me know what you want to do. If you want to negotiate, you've got till Friday. Otherwise, that's my bid. Ring me if you're happy to accept it. Peace. Like it. It's ballsy. It's the fifth bid. Um, it went in earlier this week with the opening of the transfer window on the 14th of June being considered a key factor. So at least you can say this about the Qatar bid. They're as concerned about being able to have an impact in this window as we are with them having an impact in this window. He's told the Rain Group he will not engage with the MUFC bidding process any further beyond Friday. Good, because honestly, it's taking the piss. They clearly just don't want to sell. Or they want to be involved somehow and continue rinsing us. So, the, obviously, the requirement of strengthening the squad uh, seems to play a major role in Jassim's latest bid. And this is coming from Mike Keegan. You've also had Ben Jacobs from CBS saying, Jassim's latest offer is around $6.5 billion plus $1 billion of pledged investment. The 9-2 Foundation say their offer is an enormous premium on the current share price, which factually it is. The opening of the transfer window is seen as critical by Jassim in his eyes. It will have an enormous bearing in the future of Manchester United and he feels uh, it, it coming in midsummer would be damaging. On one hand, the fifth bid by 9-2 Foundation can be seen as a power move. But as reported, Sheikh Jassim feels he won't be successful. Um, sources indicate if Jassim feels he won't be successful, sources indicate that he'll want to exit on his own terms rather than being rejected. That's an interesting one. On Jim Radcliffe's side, there remains cautious optimism. There is positive and ongoing communication between Ineos and Rain Group. And some people also sort of suggesting that uh, Ineos are, co are communicating directly with United. Because there's potential for the Glazers to stick around and be involved with the Jim Radcliffe bid. And I think that's something that's key to the Glazers. And honestly, that terrifies me to a certain degree. Um... And he says, Ineos have felt nothing imminent for a week or two, uh, but now wait and see if 9-2's foundations offer changes anything. Matt Lawton from The Times has come in and said, Jim Radcliffe and Ineos have emerged as clear favourites to complete a deal and have entered the final stage of negotiations with Rain. Simon Stone says, Sheikh Jassim's offer is for 100% of the club. It's transactionally simple. Repeating it would, be cl uh, would clear the debt and provide initial funding for players, stadium and more. That's the game. It's messy as hell. Rain Group, Ineos, Glazers sticking around. I plan to get them out eventually. All of this lot is just delaying it. Kicking it down the road, not making a decision, taking on more debt, lining them two fucking rats with even more cash. No, don't want it. I want them gone. The, unless there's an, a third or fourth or fifth option that we're just not hearing about, because of the NDAs that seemingly at least a couple of the parties don't give a fuck about. If there's not any additional bidders, because it really does seem like it's down to these two now. Are you going them or are you going them? You've got to pick a side. Not really. But the Qatar bid's the only one that makes any sort of sense to me currently at the moment. Keeping hold of the Glazers isn't optimal. Keeping hold of uh, any of the Glazers involved in the club so they can profit even further from the fucking things that they've done doesn't make any sense to me it's not viable 100% sales all I want to see uh, and you know not necessarily to Qatar 
because even though you can tell me it's Sheikh Jassim, I don't believe you, right? It's my, I'm entitled to believe what I believe, and I don't believe this isn't a state-funded thing. I believe, you can tell me, oh, it's Sheikh Jassim all on his own. Fucking is it? Aye, right, all right. You, you, yeah, you, I've got some right stories to tell you if that's what you believe. But that is way more viable of an option than the Jim Radcliffe, Glazer, fucking Axis that we could be looking at. I, I have zero desire whatsoever to see the Glazers remaining at Manchester United. Fucking none. I didn't want them in 2005. I haven't wanted them since they've raped a fucking billion and a half out of the club. I have no desire whatsoever to see them continue. None. So, the, if that's the only viable bid, the final bid has gone in, and with a deadline of Friday, for at least for negotiation, I guess they can always pick it up um, in weeks gone by, but with that sort of money on the table, you've got to think of this from the Glazer side of things, right? What have they done? They have done nothing. They put nothing in they borrowed the money they then put the money that they borrowed on the club so the club actually owes that then they've got some fucker to come in and offer them 10 times what they paid for the club and to clear the debt oh i say what they paid for the club they haven't paid for the club the club has paid for the club so they could own it and if that doesn't make any sense to what i just said well that's what happened they took a loan out for a tenth of what they're about to get put that loan and its repayments on the fucking club so the club has paid it while they own it. Now they're about to cash the chips out for 10 fucking times what that initial loan was worth that they didn't put in and they never fucking signed on their name. And they're umming and ahhing about it. It should be fucking illegal what they've just done. How is that not some sort of fraud? How is that not some sort of theft? How is what they have done, because it is legal, right? That the, the, Nothing that they've done is, is illegal. But how is it legal? Because say, just saying it's legal is just not a defence, in my opinion. What they've done is a fucking tragedy on a community asset, like a football club. Shouldn't be allowed, in my opinion. Yeah, that's what they've done. And now they're opening an iron about a guy who's about to give them 10 times what that loan was that they never even took the fucking um, the risk on. And they're still debating whether or not they should take the take the money and get the fuck out of here and never come back again. How about that for a plan? How about that for a plan? If this club is ever going to be successful, it needs to move on from being a, a glazer thing. They have not been good for the club. The club won things on their watch despite them, not because of them. Because of the genius of Sir Alex Ferguson. Because of things that was put in place under the Martin Edwards regime. And Martin Edwards, at one point, had stopped putting in from, like, 1991 onwards. He'd stopped investing his own money into United and was taking because of the shares and, and this, that, and the other, and he was making a tidy little profit for himself. But guess what? The club was making a fortune, and it was investing into the playing staff, and Carrington became a world leader of a, a, a training centre, uh, and the ground was constantly being upgraded, and we was paying record amounts for players Always rosy in the world of Manchester United. That's not happened in the 18 years since the Glazers have owned us. What can you say is best in class at Manchester United? And that's what we need to get back to. We might have an answer by Friday. I suspect we won't. I suspect this is going to kick on, be kicked down the road even more, and it'll probably wait to see. But do you know what? I'm, I like that he's put his cards on the table and just said, look, I'm not fucking about anymore. That's how much I'll offer. Seven and a half billion total package. Like it, sling it. Do you think we'll see that? Let me know how you think it's going down in the comments. See you in a bit.